So in this video, I'm gonna give you an introduction to cancer chemotherapies. And the first thing that we're gonna discuss is the key characteristics of a cancer cell. So what makes a cancer cell? How do you get from a normal cell to a cancer cell? And then in the second part, we're gonna talk about the two big drug groups that we have to treat cancers, non-targeted chemotherapies and targeted chemotherapies. So the number one characteristic is the uncontrolled growth and survival. In normal cells, growth is under powerful control mechanisms, accelerating genes and break genes. However, the key characteristic of a cancer cell is the uncontrolled growth. So if I hit a nail into my finger, there's going to be a gap and there are going to be growth factors released that stimulate the proliferation of the cell. But the cells are not going to proliferate onto the ceiling. They're going to stop because there are going to be inhibitory signals released from surrounding cells to stop the proliferation of the cell. So even if something goes wrong, if you have turned on the proliferative genes forever, there is inhibitory signals. Also, we should not forget that every cell has a toolbox, has DNA repair mechanisms, so we could even prevent mutations by repairing the cells. And then the most powerful tool that every cell has is if everything goes wrong, there's always a potential to thrive a cell into apoptosis, so you can blow up the cell before bad things are going to happen. I always like to compare a healthy cell with a good old healthy car, like a Mercedes-Benz. You're gonna go on the highway, it's empty. You're gonna press the accelerator, so you're gonna proliferate. And if there's a lot of traffic, there's the decelerator, and we have an emergency brake. And if something goes wrong, we still have the toolbox. And then we have to imagine we have a button where we can press and the car is just gonna blow up itself so we can prevent the worst case scenario. Now let's compare this to a cancer cell, to a dangerous car. So you could imagine you're stuck to the accelerator. The brake is not working, the emergency brake is not working, the toolbox is empty, and you don't have a button just to blow up the car. That's how you would get from a normal cell to a cancer cell. So you see that a lot needs to happen to make from a normal cell a cancer cell. And that's also the reason why most of the cancers are appearing over the age of 55, because you need to acquire a couple of mutations to get to a cancer cell. So that's about uncontrolled growth and survival. Another feature of a cancer cell is angiogenesis. Always when you proliferate, you need to provide nutrients and oxygen. So there needs to be the growth of blood vessel to support this tumor growth. And the last and most deadliest trick of the cancer is invasion and metastasis. A cancer cell has a possibility to intermingle with other tissues to adjacent tissues and to destroy them. And then further, a cancer cell has a possibility to go via the bloodstream somewhere else and settle there. And the story starts from scratch. So in summary, we can say a cancer cell arises when within a single cell, multiple control systems malfunction. Before we start now with the treatment of cancer, I just want to mention that when we normally talk about cancer, we are thinking about a malignant tumor. So what is the difference between a benign and a malignant tumor? So what I've drawn here is a colon, it's a tube. And here in the top, you're gonna see a cell mass that is growing. And this is supposed to be a benign tumor. So a cell mass that is growing, but always when you're growing, you need new blood vessels to provide oxygen and nutrients. But very importantly, this benign tumor is not going through the basement membrane. In contrast, a malignant tumor has the additional feature of invasion and metastasis. So it can break through the basement membrane, intermingle with adjacent tissue, and then even go via the blood somewhere else and settle there. So let's talk about our treatment options. Generally, 
from the three major characteristics I mentioned, the uncontrolled growth and survival is a target of most current chemotherapies. So generally, we divide two groups within the chemotherapies. We have the so-called non-targeted chemotherapies and the targeted chemotherapies. These names are a little bit misleading. What does really non-targeted mean? It means this treatment is not cancer cell specific. We just hit fast dividing cells. And obviously, cancer cells are fast proliferating cells. So we induce damage to cells that are proliferating, to cells that are in the cell cycle. In contrast, fortunately for some of the cancers, we know a specific mutation that thrives this cell into cell cycle. So we're going to target the mutant protein that is responsible why that cell is fast proliferating. So for the targeted, we're going to focus on why the cell is dividing. And for the non-targeted, we're just going to target it because it is dividing. So we don't know the reason. We just hit any fast proliferating cell. So fortunately, for some tumors, we know the reason why they are fast dividing. And typically, there's a mutation in a growth factor receptor signaling pathway that thrives proliferation or angiogenesis as another key feature of the cancer. Examples include the EGF receptor, the epidermal growth factor receptor, again, a receptor once stimulated that can thrive a cell into cell cycle that can use proliferation. We can target the EGF receptor either with monoclonal antibodies that target the outside of the receptor, there is cetuximab, or we target the tyrosine kinases. The tyrosine kinases are going to stimulate the proliferation through the MAP kinase pathway and through the increased transcription of cyclins, which are going to ultimately lead to the proliferation of the cell. So we can inhibit this tyrosine kinase with, for example, allotinib or gefitinib. Which of these drugs you're going to choose if you have a mutation in the EGF receptor obviously be, depends on the kind of mutation. A mutation in the tyrosine kinase that turns it all the time on is going to be successfully treated with a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. In this case, you're not going to have any success with a monoclonal antibody if the tyrosine kinase is on anyway. In contrast, if you have an overexpression of the EGF receptor, then a monoclonal antibody might be a good choice. Other examples of targeted chemotherapies hit the BCR-ABL fusion protein at translocation or the VEGF receptor. I have listed here the tyrosine kinase inhibitors that target the BCR-ABL translocation and here an antibody and tyrosine kinase inhibitors that target the VEGF receptor. So let's go back to the non-targeted chemotherapy. So drugs that just hit fast proliferating cells, so cells in cell cycle. How, so how can you interfere with the cell cycle? So you can damage DNA or you can interfere with mitosis. So how can you damage DNA? Well, you can either inhibit DNA formation if you, for example, use drugs that prevent the synthesis of DNA so that you do not have enough purines or pyrimidines or you're going to interfere with the topoisomers, several enzymes that are required for DNA formation, that's one way, or you just do very severe structural DNA damage, you just break it apart. These are the two possibilities how to damage DNA. Once the DNA is damaged, there are several checkpoints in the cell cycle they will recognize that there's something wrong and are going to be thriving the cell in apoptosis. And so you can see that the common mechanism of all the non-targeted chemotherapies is to do some damage to either DNA or interfere with mitosis. Checkpoints are going to pick that up and are going to thrive the cell into apoptosis. So the last thing that I want to introduce here is the term cell cycle specific agents and non cell cycle specific agents. 
So when you're interfering with a cell cycle, you could do this either in a specific phase, for example, in S phase, when DNA formation happens, or in the M phase, where you have mitosis, then you would call this agent that interferes in the specific phase cell cycle specific agent. In contrast, if you have a drug that does severe structural damage to existing DNA, this drug works in any phase of the cell cycle. So that's why we call these drugs non-cell cycle specific agents. This concludes the video on an introduction to cancer chemotherapy.